Welcome to the Books of Titans podcast, where I seek truth in the world's best books. I'm your host, Eric Rostad, coming to you from the beautiful Books of Titans studio in Franklin, Tennessee. My goal is to read 52 books per year and share what I'm learning. I'll talk a bit about each book, tie ideas together from a variety of genres, and share the one thing I always hope to remember from each book. Today, I'm going to talk about the books for my 2022 reading list. It'll be a special episode. I love this episode. I do this each year, just share the books that I'll be reading the following year. So uh, at about the midway point in 2021, I knew the books that I wanted to read for the following year. So if you're unfamiliar with this reading project, uh, Books of Titans, it's about reading more books and remembering what I read. So I set a goal to read 52 books per year. And so I'm thinking about the books that I want to add each year. I'm thinking about those books all year long. In fact, I kind of have like an everything notebook and I get one notebook per year. And and this will be work notes, it'll be journal, it'll be to-do lists, all sorts of things. But towards the beginning of each of these notebooks, I set aside some pages for the books that I come across during that year. And these are books that uh, a friend may have texted me about. I may hear about it in a, a newsletter. I may go into a bookstore and see this book. It may catch my eye. And the things that really spark an interest in a book, uh, obviously the topic and, and seeing it in a number of places. But if my friend suggests it and then I go into a bookstore and I see that same book and then maybe there's another newsletter that comes out and, and that book is, is suggested, it's, it's like the more times I come across it, the more the, the universe is telling me, hey, you need to read this book. And so that's part of how I put these lists together. But it's just, it's so much fun because each year I'm, I'm just thinking, <laughs> I mean, I'm reading the books for this year, but then I'm also thinking about the books that are coming next year. So it's like a continual Christmas of, of just this excitement for, for what I'm reading currently, but then also for the following year. So this year I'm, I, I have my 52 books chosen. Uh, I randomized the order that I'll be reading them because I know that if I just chose the order by myself, I would put the ones I'm most excited about at the start of the year. So I randomized the order and then I just go through book, starting book one and, and, and go to the end. I started this project in 2017. And so th- I'm finishing up the fifth year of the project right now. Another big thing that I'll be covering in this episode is next year, just that it's going to be a transition year for me and for this project. I'll be moving from sort of a phase one into a phase two. I'm super excited about this phase two, and I'll be, I'll be talking about it a little more in the next segment, but, um, but yeah, going through each of the books and then describing about this transition year. Also give a, a a few, uh, work details, uh, personal details in, in the next segment as well in regards to my reading life and work life and we'll go from there. So let's let's dig in a little break here and then we'll get into why 2022 is going to be a transition year for this project. Books come from books. I know it's quite obvious, but books do come from books. And the books that you read, they were influenced by books and those books were influenced by books. But a lot of times there is a source or there is a book that kind of a lot of other books point to that one book. And let me just give one example. So in 2018, towards the beginning of that that year, for my reading list, I read Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. And later that year, I read some other books that basically took one idea from thinking fast and slow and just kind of expanded on it for a particular industry or idea. One example was Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. He takes he takes one idea that uh, Kahneman writes about and then applies it to the world of negotiation. And I just, I, I started, I started noticing that, that a number of books out there would just take one idea from thinking fast and slow and then just kind of build on that. Well, you don't necessarily need to read all those other books if you read Thinking Fast and Slow. And Thinking Fast and Slow is hard. It's a dense book. There's a lot going on. But that's kind of the source book in a way. And and all these other books, I didn't really need to read those. Uh, If I had read Thinking Fast and Slow, that covered a lot of what was in these other books. So 
I, I saw that idea, and then you just you just see this over and over. There there are some books that are referenced time and time again. Uh, an obvious one is the Bible that that comes up in in so many different books, and you may not even. You may not realize it's coming up. They're not the person's not necessarily saying, "Hey, I'm I'm quoting the Bible here," but but it comes up all the time. And so, there are some books out there that are the important books. They're they're the great books. And as I read more and more, I I I am coming to this realization that I have not read a lot of the great books, the source books in my life. I've I've read. A lot of the newer books, maybe, um, maybe some popular books, but I've had this desire for a long time to read the great books, and so I I've been thinking along the along these lines all year. And there were two podcast episodes I listened to that that really kind of pushed me over the edge, and I am making the transition in 2022 to start reading through the great books. I want to read through 200 of them, and so I have compiled a list of 200 of the great books, and I am going to start making my way through them, but not in t- not until towards the end of 2022. So I've made a list of 52 books for next year, but only five of the books, and the, the five at the end of that list are going to be the start of the great books. And then my goal is to read through those 200 books great books by the time I am 50 years old. That will be the year 2030. So I am 41 right now. I will be starting the great books when I'm 42. So it, it's going to take around eight years, I estimate, to to get through the great books. So I will be, tran- the transition then is for the first five years of this project, my, my goal was to read 52 books per year. I'm getting rid of that. That it, That's not going to be the goal anymore. The goal is going to be to read through these 200 books by the time I'm 50 years old. That will mean fewer books than the 52 per year. So uh, I, I will have more margin to, to in, in my life in the sense to of being able to dig in deeper to these books. Um, I'm, I'm starting from the oldest book and going to the newest book. I'm not reading anything 50 years or newer. So I have the list set. I, I will do an episode on the great books and kind of dig in a little deeper. But I, I do want to mention that that next year is the transition year to where I go to the great books. And then I am just going to start reading the great books in order. I, I do plan to have enough margin to where I can kind of add some supplement books or just maybe I need a break from from these heavy philosophy books or something but uh, I, I, I want to kind of have a another book alongside the the main one uh, maybe that just gives a little more context or uh, something something to that effect but that's that's the big transition that's going to be happening next year uh, and and then just into some personal news as well. I have have started working. Well, I've been working for a local bookstore here in Franklin, Tennessee, for for about three years now, and and I do website development, so I've done their website. But uh, I've I've started taking on a, a more active role in in more of a, a business manager type of uh, type of role, and uh, so I, I'm getting deep more deeply involved in this bookstore, and I'm I'm just having a blast with it. Uh, I love. Th- the digital, I love that world of working on websites and that sort of thing. But but I, I really love the physical world and, and that divide, like uh, bridging that gap between the digital and the physical. So I'm getting more involved in, in this bookstore and you're going to start hearing more and more. I want to tie this project together more with the bookstore. Uh, in fact, I have a shelf in that bookstore that we're calling Smart Thinking, where I'm taking a lot of the books that I've read for this project and, and we're filling the, that shelf with those books. Uh, so I want to uh, integrate the two things a little more going forward, but but wanted to share uh, those two things uh, before I get into next year's reading list. And here we go into my 2022 reading list. On to book one, On Reading Well by Karen Swallow Pryor. I've been following Dr. Pryor for a couple years now on Twitter. She's a delight. And she, in addition to this book, she has a number of other books, but she also puts out these classics where she gives an introduction to the classic and then has questions at the end. And I'm actually planning on using her versions for some of the classics for my great, my great books reading list. And 
so that's going to be fun. I, I just like that idea. Um, I don't like going into books where there's too much of an introduction, but uh, knowing some of the introduction or or some of the details for the book, I think is helpful. And, and it looks like that's what, what uh, she does with these books. And then I just like the idea at the end of, of having questions. But for this book, uh, on reading well, I'm, I'm assuming it's about how to, to become a better reader and, and, and obviously how to read well. I like having at least one of these types of books per year just to become a better reader. And um, I just, I, I love these kind of books. So I'm looking forward to this one. This will be my first book that I've read by, by Dr. Pryor. Book number two, The Black Count by Tom Rice. This goes into the uh, Alexander Dumas, uh, or as they say in Shawshank Redemption, uh, Alexander Dumas, who wrote The Count of Monte Cristo. Well, this book is about his father, and apparently he was just an amazing man. And so Tom Rice uh, wrote this book in a few years ago, but it, it was a Pulitzer Prize winner. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. Number three, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. And I I read a lot about this one in the book Furious Hours, which is a nonfiction book about a serial killer in Alabama. And uh, Harper Lee attended his a, a trial associated with this serial killer. It was not for the serial killer, but it was actually a man who killed the serial killer. So um, Harper Lee was there, and Truman Capote was was helping Harper Lee with uh, trying to put these ideas together for a potential book. And and Harper Lee never wrote that book, but uh, I just came across a lot of Truman Capote in that book and and discussion about In Cold Blood, and it just gave me a desire to to want to read it. I've obviously heard about that book a lot, but uh, but that kind of gave the final push to to add it to a reading list. Book number four, The S.H. Star T, They Never Taught You, by Adam Jones and Adam Ashton. Uh, these two gentlemen have a, a book reading podcast, and I've come across them just with, with my, my book project, and uh, they're out of Australia, I believe. And they sent me the book, and it just looks awesome. I mean, they took, they took ideas from all, all the books that they've read and kind of just give a brief overview of them. So I thought it'd be fun to read through that, uh, a, a very similar project to this one, uh, but they've, they've put together this, this book of, of kind of key points from a number of, of top books. Number five, Amusing Ourselves to Death. I actually heard about this one. I've, I've heard about it a lot, but uh, Karen Pryor, who wrote the, the first book that I'll be reading for 2022, she suggested this uh, either in a podcast episode or, or on her website or something. It's by Neil Postman, and um, yeah, it's just you know, Amusing Ourselves to Death that kind of self-explanatory, but uh, I've heard really good things about it. I've, I've seen it on lists of important books and ones that, that should be read. Uh, so that's uh, number five. Number six, The Origin of the Family, Private Property, and the State by Frederick, Frederick Engels. Apparently, this is kind of the second book of uh, communist ideals. The first one is the Communist Manifesto, and then this one goes into more of of how to dismantle the family in order to get the communist ideals across. That's what I've heard. That's what I'm told is in this book. I'm reading it because I want to see if there are any parallels into the language that we hear in just media or discussions, if there are any similarities between that language and what is found in this book. Because apparently this is kind of the the blueprint of of how to usher in a communist society. So just kind of interested and, and want to cover it on the podcast. The next book is number seven, The Long Ships by Franz Bengs- Beng- Bengston. And this one was suggested in an episode of the Tim Ferriss Show podcast, I believe, where he interviewed Michael Lewis. And Michael Lewis just said this was a, a fantastic book. And so based on that recommendation, I took a look at it and, and it does look quite interesting. Now, number eight, The Marriage of Figaro by Mozart. And this is an opera. So how are you going to read an opera? Well, this, I'm actually the most excited about this. Uh, I am going to kind of do a deep dive. And so this is going to consist of a number of things. First, The Marriage of Figaro, the opera, is based off of a book. So I'm going to read the book first that the 
opera is based off. So first the book, second, I'm going to read uh, the lib- libretto, which is kind of like the the language that's in the opera, the, what the characters are singing and um, uh, throughout the opera. So that'll be the second thing. The third thing is I'm going to go through the musical score of The Marriage of Figaro as I listen to the opera. Uh, I, I like opera, and The Marriage of Figaro is one of my favorite. I've probably listened to it 500 times or more, and that's not an, an exaggeration. I used to just listen to it while I would work. So it would just kind of, I would. it's three hours long, but I would listen to it and then listen to it again. Um, I, I love it. I, I just absolutely love this opera and I I have no idea what they're saying. And so, yes, I've listened to it 500 times and I have no idea what they're saying. Um, and so I'm going to get the story behind the opera that I've listened to so many times. I'm going to get the actual, what they're saying in the opera, and then I'm going to just do a deep dive into the musical score as well. I cannot wait for that. That, I'm so excited about that. So that's number eight. Number nine, The Bookseller of Florence by Ross King. I heard Ross on a podcast and he talks about just the, this kind of how uh, books came into play in 15th, maybe 14th, 15th century Italy in Florence. And so this should just be a fun book as a, as a book lover. Number 10, Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. I've read all of his other books. I've not read Sapiens. And so I want to read this, read uh, his, his book, Sapiens. Number 11, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Heard a lot about it. (laughs) Don't really have any idea what it's about or what it's going to, what it's going to be like, but um, it's just kind of interested me. And so I'm going to add it to this year. Number 12, Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. Uh, My neighbor suggested this book, as did one of my colleagues at the Landmark Booksellers. And they said it's an excellent book. Kevin Wilson is also a, a Tennessee author. He teaches at the University of the South in Suwannee, Tennessee. And so this will be my first book by him. Number 13, The Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson. This is his latest book. I'm an Isaacson fan. I've read a, a number of his other biographies, and um, this this one looks interesting. He's just kind of one of those authors that if he comes out with a new book, I will probably be reading it. Number 14, He Saw That It Was Good by Sho Baraka. Sho Baraka is a rapper, and he lives in Atlanta. I heard him on a podcast talking about this book, and it just sounded awesome. I downloaded his album, and it was fantastic. And so this this book, I, I it'll be cool. It'll be cool. Number 15, The Seven Story Mountain by Thomas Merton. Never read any Merton. Joel Tomlin, the owner of Landmark Booksellers, suggested this book to me. He talks about it quite often, and so I wanted to add it to my reading list. Number 16, Notre Dame, A Short History of the Meaning of Cathedrals by Ken Follett. I actually had Ken Follett's other book on the list, uh, The Pillars of, I can't remember, but um, I, I've never read any any of his books. But uh, I just like learning about cathedrals and stuff, and, and his Pillars book was about cathedrals. But Notre Dame is my favorite, it, it's my favorite building in the entire world. And uh I've been in Paris a few times, and when I'm there, I I make a point to sit in that cathedral for extended periods of time. I bring a journal. I just sit and write, and I just sit and stare and uh, just love it. I just think it's the most beautiful, incredible building in the world. And so uh, I was was deeply saddened when the fire happened, and uh, I think he wrote this book after that fire just to... um, to talk about Notre Dame, but then also the the short history and meaning of cathedrals. Number 17, Noise by Daniel Kahneman. Uh, Thinking Fast and Slow was, was one of my favorites for this project. So if Daniel Kahneman comes out with a book, I am going to read it. So that's the first 17 books. I will get into the next 17 books in the next segment. Number 18, Industrial Society and Its Future by Theodore John Kaczynski. Yes, that is the Unabomber, and this is the Unabomber Manifesto. Hey, why not? Why not read some uh, some books that are, I don't know, dangerous, um, banned? I've got a few of those on the list this year, 
but this one, I ju- I'm just curious about it. Um, I've heard it's it's pretty insightful, despite the fact that he liked blowing people up. I don't know. I'm going to give it a try, and I look forward to, to covering it on the podcast. The next book after that, Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail in 1972 by Hunter Thomas. Again, I don't know anything about this book, but it's one that I, I would keep hearing about, um, seeing, and... I added it to the list, not really knowing anything about what it's going to be like. So looking forward to that one as well. Number 20, The Apocrypha. The Apocrypha. I have never read The Apocrypha. Uh, It actually kind of scares me. And the way I grew up in church is The Apocrypha was part of a different church. It was the Catholics read it and other groups read it. And we were, well, I was at least just scared of it. But I want to get over that fear. I just want to read it. I uh, hear good things about it. And um, yeah, so I've, I've added it to the list. Number 21, Radical Hope, Ethics in the Face of Cultural Devastation by Jonathan Lear. This was, I, again, I believe this was a Tim Ferriss Show podcast episode where he interviewed Sebastian Younger. And Sebastian Younger talked about this book. It sounded really interesting. And it sounded rare in the sense that if I didn't order it quickly, it would be hard to get. And so I just ordered it right after that episode and uh, added it to the list. Number 22, The Spy That Came In From The Cold by Jean Lacar. Uh, this one was suggested by Graham Green. I have never read a, a book by this author, and so this will be my first entry, and apparently they're just kind of like the best spy thrillers. Number 23, A History of the World in Six Glasses by Tom Standage. Again, this is one that just kind of kept popping up in different conversations, uh, different podcast episodes that I was listening to, and so um, I was curious about it. I, I like these kind of books where you get kind of a broad overview and... Um, And yeah, A History of the World in Six Classes. Number 24, Galapagos by Kurt Vonnegut. Vonnegut, this will be my first book by him. This was suggested and gifted to me by my neighbor. And so I want to give it a try. Number 25, Scotland 2070. So what is Scotland going to be like or what could it be like in 2070? If you've listened to this podcast at all, you know that I'm a huge fan of Scotland. I love the country. Uh, My wife and I named our daughter after the country. And uh, this book is by uh, a couple that I know in Scotland, Ian and Dorothy Godden. And they have written this book. And so, hey, uh, if they've written it, I'm going to read it. Number 26, On Writing by Stephen King. I I like reading um, at least one book a year just on the process of writing because I I find that it helps me be a better reader to know kind of what goes into the craft of writing. And Stephen King's is is always on the top of the lists of books about writing. So there it is. Number 27, The Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Another, uh, this probably could have been added to the great books list, uh, but one that I've owned for a while and just have never read. So I moved it from the shelf of haven't read to uh, one that will be read here soon. Number 28, The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. Again, I just like to have a a finance-related book, uh, at at least one a year. Some of the finance books I've read in my life have have paid huge dividends, literally, in the sense that I will make changes after reading those uh, to my financial life and... I I think there are good changes. And so even if I pull one idea from a financial book, uh, it could have huge ramifications. So say you pay 20 bucks for the book and you get one good financial idea that makes you many times that $20 you spent on the book. So I I encourage you guys to do that too, just to have at least one financial book, just to to be wise about uh, the money that you take in. The uh, number 29, Present Concerns Essays by C.S. Lewis. Again, I like to have one book by C.S. Lewis each year, and uh, I found this book recently, and and so I thought I'd add it because I have not read it. Number 30, The Road by Cormac McCarthy. If you've listened to this podcast, you know that I hated Cormac McCarthy in 2017 because I read Blood Meridian and just despised the book, had a change of heart last year as I reread the book and actually just really enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. So I've read All the Pretty Horses, but that was probably 20 years ago and I don't remember a single thing about it. And so my 
McCarthy is pretty much Blood Meridian, and so I want to read something else by him, and I hear good things about this one. I, I hear it's quite a ride. Number 31, A Man at Arms by Stephen Pressfield. Uh, I've read some Stephen Pressfield for this project, and Pressfield uh, sent this book to me. It's about, uh, it, it takes place right after the time of, of Jesus, and it just kind of sounded really interesting. So it's it's a work of fiction. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Number 32, The World Ending Fire by Wendell Berry, the owner of Landmark Booksellers, Joel Tomlin, also suggested this one. Uh, a lot of people I follow really like Wendell Berry, and I've never read anything by Wendell Berry. So this this will be uh, my first foray into the Wendell Berry. Number 33, Sir Gibby by George MacDonald. My wife, her favorite author is George MacDonald, so I have to have one book a year by George MacDonald. I really enjoy his works too. And so this next year, it's going to be Sir Gibby. And it's a book, uh, it's Sir Gibby. Um, well, if you don't know who George MacDonald is, he influenced a number of writers, including C.S. Lewis and Tolkien, uh, but Neil Gaiman as well, and uh, lived in the 1800s in Scotland. But uh, David Jack has done a a version of Sir Gibby where he puts the the old Scots version of the writing on one side of the page and then and then into mo- kind of modern English on the right side. So that's the version I got, and that's the one I'll be reading as book 33. Number 34, From the Holy Mountain by William Dalrymple. I've read a number of books by by him. He wrote one uh, called Return of the King, which I yeah I think that's the one. But it was about it's about Afghanistan, but it's about when the British were in Afghanistan. And after I read that like in 2013, and after reading that, I was I was just thinking like, did anyone read this in? the U S government that decided to go to Afghanistan, because this is not a good idea. And that's like, he ends the book just saying, you know, it's not going to be a good ending for the U S and then probably China is going to go in there next. And, and that book has been very prescient this year with everything going on in Afghanistan. But I've read a number of his other books, um, about, about, in, uh, about India. Uh, I traveled to India in 2007 and was reading some of the books just about the history. And and so I like him as a writer. I read one of his books for this project in Xanadu, uh, two years ago. And, and <laughs> that book was awesome. So I, I actually, uh, sent a tweet to, uh, a direct message through Twitter to Dalrymple and asked him of your books, which one would you, you suggest? And, and this is the one he suggested. So I bought it immediately and that's why it is on the list. So those are books 18 through 34. I'll get through 35 and 50, through 52 in the next segment. Well, for each of these books, I buy the hardcover version, um, or, or I try to, I, I, I get the paperback as well. I, I cannot read very well on the digital devices. Um, I just don't remember it as well. There's something about the page and seeing it on the page. I can actually visualize the page where I saw an idea or a sentence. And I can't do that on mobile just because it's you're flipping and and scrolling and all that. So um, I I make it a point to get the physical books. I also like seeing them on the shelves because it just reminds me you read this book. Uh, I can kind of think of the ideas I got from the book and all that. But Anyway, I, I uh, have opened up this this year's reading project to uh, I've created an Amazon wish list. So if you would like to help support this podcast, you can do that by buying one of the books I've been talking about in this episode. Um, that would help me greatly. I've got 14 left that I, I don't have for next year. So I, I just need 14 more and I'll have all of them on my shelf ready to, to read. Uh, I think people have already sent me 10 uh, it's it's ten or, or or a few more, and and I am so thankful for that. Uh, so if you're listening and you have sent me a book, thank you so much. I will uh, try to mention you in the podcast episode for that particular book. And uh, but just it it brings me great joy to get books as gifts. And so I, I will link in the show notes. Uh, it's the Amazon wish list. I have the version of the book in there that I, that. I, I would like to read. So if, if you want to support the podcast, you can do that. Uh, let me go into the the final books for this project or for 2020, 
to reading list. So book number 35, Oranges by John McPhee. I read draft number four by John McPhee last year. That was my first McPhee book. I've heard great things. I, I liked draft number four. Oranges is a book about, well, oranges. And apparently he just goes, he takes a deep dive into oranges. And I th- thought it would just be really fun to read that book and, and to see an, a, a master, a master author kind of dig deep. Number 36, Reading While Black by Esau McCauley. I uh, follow Esau uh, on on Twitter. And uh, again, I just uh, love love uh, his content. And I've seen this book pop up a lot. And it, it looks very interesting. So I'm looking forward to that one. Number 37, Beloved by Toni Morrison. I've never read this book and I need to. I know I need to. I want to. And so it's number 37. Number 38, The Mind of the Maker by Dorothy Sayers. Uh, Dorothy Sayers uh, is kind of in that crew with uh, C.S. Lewis and Tolkien. And I've never read anything by Sayers. And I, I would like to. This is a nonfiction book of hers. She's she's done a number of, of uh, fiction works as well. But I just kind of want to get an introduction to her. And uh, in an episode of Philip Yancey, I heard him suggest this as a a good book to start with for Dorothy Sayer. So uh, I'm going to do that. Number 39, The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. I've never read anything by James Baldwin. This will be my first book by him. And uh, this appears to be kind of one of his most famous books. Number 40, The Secret History by Donna Tartt. A couple years ago, I read a book called The Quick Adios by Tom Corcoran. And bringing this back to Landmark Booksellers, I was in Landmark Booksellers one day and and this author, Tom Corcoran, walked in. And and he's an author from Key West. He's a good friend friend of Jimmy Buffett's. And he kind of writes these... um, these mysteries, uh, action books that, that take place in, in Key West. And so I read one of his books a couple years ago after having met him. But when he was in the store, uh, I like doing this. If, if I ever meet you, I may ask you this question, but what's your hinge book? What, what's the book that got you reading uh, and, and kind of led to all the other books that are on your, your shelves? And Tom Cor- Corcoran, when I asked him that, he he mentioned the secret history by Donna Tartt. So I immediately wanted to 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 read that. Number forty one, the Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. Uh, I've heard him on podcasts, and then I also read Coddling of the American Mind a couple of years ago. I, I consider that to be one of the most important books that I've read for this project in our current time, uh, uh, where we are in in history. And I think he he nailed a lot of things. And so this is a book he wrote before Coddling in the American Mind and just curious to uh to read it. Number 42, The Body by Bill Bryson. Uh I am just I am so ignorant on anything having to do with medical, <laughs> uh the body, uh how things work. Um my mind just kind of goes numb when people start telling me things that are going on medically with them. And I, I would like for that not to be the case. And so the body is kind of my attempt to to learn well about, about the body. Number 43, Children of Ash and Elm, A History of the Vikings by Neil Price. All right, I, I actually need your help with this because I'm deciding between this book and another book. But the point here is I want to try to read a book a year about the Vikings. Uh, I my family heritage is Norwegian, and I just want to learn about the history. And so here's one, Children of Ash and Elm, A History of the Vikings. The other one I'm thinking about is The Viking Heart by Arthur Herman. And I just heard him on a podcast talking about this book. It sounds very interesting. And so if you have read either of those, please message me, eric at booksoftitans.com. Tell me which one I should read of those two um, it, for the purpose of, of learning about Viking history, Norwegian history. Well, which 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 one of those should I read? So that one's still up in the air, but it's it's it. Book forty three is going to be somehow about the Vikings and not the football team, even though they are my football team, but about the the historical Vikings. Number forty four: Why Art Matters: A Call for Christians to Create by Alistair Alistair Gordon. Uh, I I met Alistair not in person, but via Zoom. Uh, on a website I was working for, for a travel location in Edinburgh. It is called the Rock House. And if you're ever in Edinburgh, you need to stay at this place. But the Rock House, uh, Alistair Gordon created art 
for the rock house and the rock house house has just an incredible history it's actually the history of photography has a lot to do with with the rock house uh on Car- carton hill uh Col- yeah carton hill in in edinburgh and alistair gordon has has created this this fantastic artwork for this the rock house and they and and for me to create this website for the rock house we are also selling his art so i got to meet alistair through that through zoom and he was telling me about this book that he was coming out with later uh, this year. And so I, I purchased it, I pre-ordered it, got it, and it, I'm all set to, to read it next year. Number 44, no, sorry, number 45, The Technological Society by Jacques Ellel. Ellel. Uh, this one was suggested by a uh, technology writer, John C. Dvorak, and it was written in the 70s, I believe. And I just hear it, it is quite prescient. So I wanted to read it. Number 46, The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson. Uh, read uh, read at least one book by Eric Larson, and I have some other ones, but um, this one's about Winston, Winston Churchill, and and I, it, it looks really good, and, and I liked Eric's other book, the, um, the one about the serial killer. Number 47, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. I just see this all over the place. I've never read it. I have read Open by Andre Agassi, but Andre Agassi used a ghostwriter. I can't recall his name right now, but it's the same ghostwriter who wrote Shoe Dog for Phil Knight. And if Shoe Dog is anything like Open by Andre Agassi, I know I will really like it. So those are books one through 47. Now is the transition. Now I'm moving from phase one to phase two of the Books of Titans project, and here's where we start getting into the great books. These will be the first five of the great books. Again, they are in order of oldest to newest. And so the first book, which will be book 48 for my 2022 reading list, but book one for my 200 books for the great books project will be the Epic of Gilgamesh. That's it. Number 48. Number 49, The Writings from Ancient Egypt. Number 50, The Rig Veda. Number 51, Enuma Elish, which is a Babylonian. And then number 52, The Iliad by Homer. And I believe it is, uh, I can't, I can't, let me look that up, the version that I'll be reading. Uh, it's going to be the Caroline Alexander trans translation of the Iliad by Homer. So that's it. That's, uh, that's the all 52 books for my reading list. Uh, again, I'm going to do a a separate episode that, that digs in deeper to the great books, uh, more of the influence of why I decided to do that and how that will become phase two of this project and really, uh, uh, the sole focus for this project going forward. And, and that'll start towards the end of, of next year. Um, the most excited, I, I, uh, I did this the previous year too. I just kind of went through some of the, the books that I'm, uh, most excited about most, most interesting, all, all that kind of stuff. So let's go through this. The book I'm most excited about is that marriage of Figaro. And it's kind of that three set where I'm going through the actual story so the book that that uh, led to the opera, so the the libretto, which is what they're actually singing during the opera, and then I'm going to go through the actual musical score. So that'll be a three part thing, and then my my idea for that episode of the podcast is to actually share the music and then talk about it, talk about what they're saying, all that. I can't wait. I'm, I'm so excited about that. Most c- curious. Um, Gosh, I, I I would I think the Industrial Society and its future by by the Unabomber. That that's probably most curious about that book. Just you know what what causes somebody to write something that uh, is apparently very prescient of of uh, on the technology front, but then to I don't know if he was trying to get his message out by bombing people or what. But um, but yeah, that's most curious about that. Most interesting. And I, I don't have these written down. I'm just kind of going on the fly uh, with these. Probably the Apocrypha, just because it's it's a book that I've kind of feared reading, kind of wondered why it was in some Bibles and not in others. But I have never read it. In and um, but apparently a lot of of our art 
is based off stories in the Apocrypha. I just think it's, I, I, I need to read it. So most interesting that I think that's, that would fall under that most educational, um, gosh, maybe that body book, just because I'm so ignorant on anything medical that, uh, most educational will be something that I, I just don't even really have much of a, a starting point on, on any knowledge whatsoever. And can't wait the book. I can't wait to read. Hmm. Probably the marriage of Figaro, just because I've enjoyed that opera so much. So to read the actual book of what it was, what it was based from, um, I'm really looking forward to that. It was by Bo Bo Marquise, Bo Marquise, and it's Barber. The Barbaro Seville and The Marriage of Figaro, uh, both both of those books. So I'm, I'm probably going to read both stories because um, they they tie in to one another and and give context into what happens in The Marriage of Figaro. So that's going to do it. I I will have some links in the show notes. Uh, one will be a podcast I did a while ago on how to create a re- reading list. Um, I, I will link to my 2022 reading list so you can see the book covers. And then I give some explanations as to why I'm reading those. Uh, if you click on any of the book covers, also link to that Amazon wish list if you would like to support the podcast. But thank you for listening. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Maybe you've read some of the books that I mentioned today. I'd love to hear what you th- what you thought about them. Um, and if you have an idea on that book about the Vikings, which one I should read, please email me, Eric at booksoftitans.com. You can follow Books of Titans on Instagram or Twitter, and you can go to my website. I have a ton of resources there to help you find the best books and to create your own reading list. I'll be back in a couple weeks, and I will be discussing a book or a series from my 2021 reading list. I am hoping to have the Harry Potter series done by that point. I'm on book four right now. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm I'm just very impressed by, by the books. And, uh, so it, some upcoming episode will be about Harry Potter. Not sure if it'll be the next one, if it, I'll be finished by that point, but, uh, it will be coming up. And then later on in the year, I will have another episode for, uh, the great books. Uh, and then towards the very, very end of the year, uh, w- one other episode I really like doing each year is to go through, I just stack all the books on my desk that I read for that year. And I pick them, pick them up one by one and share the one thing that I remember. I do not consult any notes. This is kind of the the, the end of the year test for the reading project to see how much I've remembered. So I, what ends up happening too, those are fun episodes to, to listen to because you're getting the one thing that stuck out to me after however many months of, of having read the, the books. So the one thing that, that, that still sticks in my mind. Thanks for listening and... Keep reading, keep learning, keep listening. I'm out.